Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 19. In this video, we're going to learn about graphing linear inequalities in two variables. So a linear inequality in two variables is of the form ax plus by is greater than c, where our greater than here can also be a less than, a less than or equal to, or it can be a greater than or equal to. Now, some specific things about this form. We have a, a b, and a c. a is a coefficient of x, b is the coefficient of y, and c, which is a constant. So a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b cannot both be zero, meaning a could be zero, or b could be zero, but they can't both be zero at the same time. All right, so graphing a linear inequality in two variables is very similar to graphing a linear equation in two variables. If you can graph a linear equation in two variables at this point, which you should be able to, then graphing a linear inequality in two variables is going to be no more difficult. There's really just one additional step. So the first thing that you want to do is draw something known as a boundary line. So this is a very important concept for this topic, and we talked about it a little bit when we talked about checking our solution for a linear inequality in one variable. But the boundary line basically separates the solution region from the non-solution region. So in other words, if I have a line, let's say it looks like this, and it's on my coordinate plane. Well, on one side of it, the ordered pairs or the points would work. Let's say this is my solution region. So if I take values from over here, ordered pairs, or you could say points, and I plug them into the original inequality, I get a true statement. Then over here, let's say this is the non-solution region, the non-solution region. So ordered pairs or points over here are not going to work. So this line is what's going to separate the two. This is called, again, the boundary line, the boundary line. So we obtain our boundary line by replacing the inequality symbol with an equal sign and graphing the line. So essentially all you're doing is you're starting out by taking your linear inequality in two variables and transforming it into a linear equation in two variables and just graphing it. But there's one thing you really need to know before you do that. So there's two scenarios. So a strict inequality, so strictly less than or strictly greater than, that gives us a dashed or broken boundary line. And why do you think that is? Well, if you have a strict inequality, the boundary line is not part of your solution. And I want you to recall at this point when we talked about a linear inequality in one variable. Let's say I saw something like x is less than 3. This was strict. So we had notation when we graphed this on the number line. So let's say this is 0. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's say over here this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So when we graphed x is less than 3, we found 3. And we said 3 is not included. So what we did was we put a parenthesis there facing to the left. I know some of you put an open circle, but it's the same thing. And then we shaded everything to the left. So this is very similar. When we use a dashed or broken boundary line, it's kind of like the parenthesis was here. We're saying it's not included as part of the solution. So then kind of the next scenario would be a non-strict inequality. And for this one, you're going to have a solid boundary line. Okay, a solid boundary line. And the reason for that is it's included. So let's say I had something like x is less than or now equal to 3. Instead of the parenthesis, I had a bracket. Right? So it's similar to that because the bracket told me that 3 was included. So that's what we're doing here with the solid boundary line. That line is included as part of the solution. All right, so let's start out with 2x plus y is less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to do this the slow way to start. I'm going to put an equal sign here. I'm going to put 2x plus y equals 1. I'm going to graph it the slow way. So I'm going to make some ordered pairs. And I can see immediately if I put a 0 in for x, y would be 1. That's the y-intercept. So that's easy. And then to get some other points going, I can't put a 0 in for y because if I do, I'm not going to end up with an integer. Right? Plug in a 0 for y. You'd end up with x equals one half. 
So that's not something that I want to deal with on my coordinate plane. So let's try if x was one. So two times one plus y equals one. So this would be two plus y equals one. And so subtract two from both sides of the equation, that's gone, I'd have y is equal to negative one. So if x is one, y is negative one. And let's try a value of x equals two. So if x is two, this would be four plus y equals one. Subtract four from each side of the equation, that's gone, y is equal to negative three. All right, so I have three ordered pairs. Let's plot those ordered pairs and let's draw a line. This line is gonna be our boundary line. Now, what do we want? We have a non-strict inequality. This is non-strict. So if we have a non-strict inequality, the boundary line is part of the solution. So we want a solid line. So let's go draw a solid line. So I want the point zero comma one. So that's right here. I want the point one comma negative one. That's gonna be right here. And I want the point two comma negative three. So two over to the right, three down, that's right there. And again, we're gonna draw a solid line. Okay, so once you've graphed the line, go back up to the top now. This is your one additional step. You're gonna read in your book something about a test point a test point, okay? And the test point works like this. You can test any point on either side of the line. If it works, that means that side of the line is the solution region, and therefore you're gonna shade that side of the line. If it doesn't work, you're in the non-solution region, and you're gonna shade the other side of the line. So let's go back down here we look at, we're not gonna choose any point on the line because we already know that that's gonna work as a solution. The easiest point to choose if it's not on your line is zero comma zero, right? Because zero is easy to work with. So let's go back up and we're gonna plug in a zero for X and a zero for Y. So my test point is zero comma zero. So I would have two times zero plus zero is less than or equal to one. So two times zero is zero, plus zero is zero, so zero is less than or equal to one, that's true. So what that tells me is that this point right here, zero comma zero is on the solution region. So that means that the solution region is below the line. So in other words, I would shade everything below the line. And it's hard to do a good job of shading, so I just kind of do it this way. I know there's some computer programs that will shade this perfectly, but if you're doing this freehand, this is about as good as we're gonna do. Okay, so in other words, this is the solution region. And over here, anything kind of above this line is the non-solution, non-solution region. And just try it out for yourself. Pick some points over here. Pick six comma zero, for example. That is in the non-solution region, so it shouldn't work. If I plug it in, I should get a false statement. So if I plug in a six for X and a zero for Y, I should get a false statement. Two times six is 12, 12 plus zero is not gonna be less than or equal to one, right? 12 is not less than or equal to one, that's false. So that's kind of the first method you can use to do that. Now, let me show you the fast way. So some books skip this altogether, and that should kind of make you a little mad because this is way, way, way faster. So alternatively, we can solve the inequality for y, draw the boundary line, same way, you just replace the inequality symbol with an equal symbol, and then you shade above the line for greater than or greater than or equal to, you shade below the line for less than or less than or equal to. So in the previous example, I could have started out, I didn't need to get any ordered pairs, I could have just solved this guy for y. Forget about this test point, don't need that anymore. So solve it for y, we have y, is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 1. Now, for the boundary line, I would replace this with equals, so I'd have y equals negative 2x plus 1. I know this is in slope-intercept form, so it's super easy to graph it. The y-intercept occurs at 0, 1. The slope is negative 2. So you can see I already have that point here, 0, 1. 
And my slope is negative two, so I go down one, two, over one. Down one, two, over one. So I would graph the same line, so I'd come about that a little bit quicker. Now, the next thing is the fact that it's less than or equal to. So if it's a less than, whether it's a less than or equal to or strictly a less than, you shade below the line, and that's what we did here. So we would just shade below the line, okay, below the line. And once you get into a habit of doing it this way, it's much, much, much quicker. You don't need to worry about getting a test point and all this other stuff and going through and getting ordered pairs. It's way quicker. So you're basically putting it into slope intercept form to graph it. Once you've done that, you look at the inequality that you're dealing with. If it's a less than or it's a less than or equal to, it's below the line that you're going to shade. If it's a greater than or a greater than or equal to, you just shade above the line. So for the next one, we look at 7x minus 4y is greater than negative 8. So we're going to do this the quick way. So let's just rewrite this real fast. We have 7x minus 4y is greater than negative 8. Solve it for y. So I'd subtract 7x from both sides of the inequality. I'd get negative 4y is greater than negative 7x minus 8. Then I would divide both sides of the inequality by negative 4. But remember, if I divide by a negative, I've got to flip the inequality. So instead of this being a greater than inequality, I'm going to have a less than, right? So that symbol there is going to flip from greater than to less than. So this is y is less than negative 7 divided by negative 4 is 7 fourths, then times x, negative 8 divided by negative 4 is plus 2. So if I replace this less than with an equals, I'd have y equals 7 fourths x plus 2. So this is my boundary line. And you'll notice that this inequality is a strictly less than, okay? So I want to make sure that I have a broken or dashed line. So y equals 7 fourths x plus 2. That's what I'm going to graph. So my y-intercept occurs at 0 comma 2. It's right there. And my rise over run is 7 over 4. So I go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the right four, one, two, three, four. And I can do that using negative seven over negative four as well. Negative over negative is positive. So I can fall seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and to the left four, one, two, three, four. So I start out by just drawing a solid line, and then I take my eraser, and I just kind of break it up. So just break it up. Good enough to where your teacher or whoever's grading your work can see that that line is broken or dashed. Okay, so this is a, an example of a dashed line. Let me kind of break that up a little bit too. So that tells me that an ordered pair that exists on that line is not going to be involved in the solution. So for example, the point 4, 9 will not be a solution. And we'll test that in a minute. Let me just write that. We're going to test 4, 9. Before we do that, Remember, this is a strictly less than. So that tells me I want to shade below the line. So when I shade this, I'm going to shade below the line. So all this. That's all you need to do is give your teacher a representation of where the solution region is going to be. So just shade all of this. Okay, so let's test a few things. So let's test 4, 9 in the original inequality. I'm going to erase all of this. I don't need it. We'll show you this doesn't work. So it lies on that boundary line. So 7 times 4 minus 4 times 9 is greater than negative 8. 7 times 4 is 28 minus 4 times 9 is 36. This is greater than negative 8. So 28 minus 36 is negative 8. That's not greater than negative 8. But remember, if I had a greater than or equal to here, this would end up being true. So that's the difference between having a strict inequality and a non-strict inequality. Again, if you have a strict inequality like we have here, we do not allow, okay, we do not allow for anything on that boundary line to be part of the solution for that reason that I just showed you. So we break it up to say, hey, nothing on this line works. With a non-strict inequality, the things on the line do work as solutions. So you got to draw a solid line for your boundary line when you have a non-strict inequality and a broken or dashed line for a strict inequality. 
Now, one more thing I want to just bring your attention to. If we use the test point here, we could still see that we have the right answer. You could pick something in the solution region. Again, 0, 0, the origin is very, very easy to use. So that's something that should work. So let's go back up and test it. Let's see if 0, 0 works as it should. Plug in a 0 here and here. 0 minus 0, which is 0, should be greater than negative 8. That is true. Okay, so 0, 0 should be in the solution region, and it is, right, because it does work. So you can kind of use that as a little check to show that you graphed the correct region. All right, let's take a look at a few special case scenarios. So something like y is greater than or equal to 2. Well, we saw that if we had something like y is equal to 2, this is a horizontal line, right? So we would find 2 on the y-axis, and we would draw a horizontal line. We're essentially going to do the same thing for something like this. So y is greater than or equal to 2. It's a non-strict inequality. So my boundary line will be a solid line. I'm going to find 2 on my y-axis. So that's right here. Okay. So this would be the line y equals 2. And again, that's our boundary line in this case. Now, because y was a greater than or equal to, I'm just going to shade above this line, because y is anything that is greater than or equal to 2. Now, again, no matter what the x value is, it's going to work, because the y value that's given will be larger or equal to 2. So if I pick something like, I don't know, let's say an x value of 5, and a y value of 10. Well, again, I could represent this by saying I have 0x plus y is greater than or equal to 2. So whatever I plug in for x just goes away. So I plug in the value for y, I plug in a 10. 10 is greater than or equal to 2. Yeah, 10 is greater than 2, so this is true. All right, so you can see how that's a very easy scenario to deal with. All right, so another easy one would be something like x is greater than 4. So we saw that x equals 4 is a vertical line. So I would find 4 on the x-axis. That's right here. And I would draw a vertical line. But here's the key. Because we have a strict inequality, this is strict, I can't include that line as part of the solution. So I've got to kind of break it up or make it dashed. <laughs> And now I'm going to take my eraser, just take chunks out of it. Okay, so that's a broken up or dashed line. And again, just do enough to where your teacher can tell what you're doing. And then x is greater than 4. So greater than in terms of the x-axis means you're going to the right. Remember, if you're increasing on the x-axis, you're going to the right. If you're decreasing, you're going to the left. So if it's a greater than, you're shading to the right. So I want to shade in this direction now. Because again, any x value in this direction is greater than the value of 4. If I pick an x value of 6, it doesn't matter what y is. That value for x is greater than 4. So anything to the right of 4 is going to work. That's why we shade all this over to the right.